European countries are struggling to cope with the coronavirus pandemic. Intensive care is the last line of defense for severely ill coronavirus patients and Europe is now running out of beds, doctors and even nurses to treat them. In ICU units across Europe, there is no end in sight for the doctors and nurses who have been keeping the virus at bay for months. In country after country, the intensive care burden of COVID-19 patients is surpassing capacity. Health officials warn that adding beds will be of no use as there aren't enough doctors and nurses trained to manage the tide of virus patients that are now trickling in. And here's what the situation looks like in various parts of Europe. In France, over 90% of the intensive care unit is occupied by COVID-19 patients. More than 7,000 healthcare workers have undergone training in intensive care techniques in the country. Nursing students, interns, paramedics all have been drafted. Italian doctors to fear that the current infection rate there soon won't be enough doctors to treat patients. Italy has a total of 11,000 ICU beds, but only enough anesthesiologists for 5,000 patients. Patients from France, Belgium and the Netherlands are being evacuated to German intensive care units, but German doctors say they are watching the number of free beds dwindle quickly. Now, in just the last two weeks, the number of coronavirus patients treated in ICUs in Germany has almost tripled. But the situation in Germany is better than that of France, Belgium, the Netherlands and Britain. Germany has about 34.5 ICU beds per 100,000 inhabitants. Italy has 10 beds per 100,000 inhabitants, while France has 16 beds per 100,000 inhabitants. Hungary too has warned that its ICUs would run out of space by December. Still, there are a few signs of hope. As Belgium, among the worst hit countries in Europe, is seeing increasing indications of a turning point in the crisis after a partial lockdown. Health experts continue to advocate stricter lockdown measures as a solution to flatten the virus curve. Let's get in a sense of perspective on this new story as I'm joined in by a virologist at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Professor Amos Panet, who's joining us live from Jerusalem. A very warm welcome to you, Professor. Now, what are the viable options for Europe to battle this shortage of beds and doctors? How practical are these stringent lockdowns as a solution? Uh, good day to all of you from Jerusalem. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, well, what, what we see in many countries, including Israel, is wave after wave of, uh, of infection. And until we will have the vaccine, which probably will come in the next few months, we will have to keep lockdown, but very strict and not released from lockdown, as we have done all over the Western world, at least, very quickly and without any any kind of uh, control. So we will have to live with partial lockdown for the next few months, no other way. Otherwise, we'll have the third wave and the fourth wave, and it will keep on coming. And the only, the only real solution will be the vaccine, which Pfizer right. has announced. Right, Professor, we will also be talking about the vaccine in just a bit. After a dip in new cases during June till the August period, now Europe is reporting a far higher number of cases than during its previous peak. The United States, too, is going through a resurgence, while Indian states like Delhi and Kerala are also seeing a fresh resurgence. What causes um, explain this resurgence of the virus? Well, what's causing it is just uh, opening up markets, opening up stores, schools, so the, the, the next plan is to open very gradually and wait two weeks before any further opening. Because we need at least two weeks to get a notice how much, for example, opening shops or opening schools, how much they contribute to the infection. We don't know it because the pressure, the economic pressure is such that there is very fast opening of all sectors of the economy. So we have to open it much slower. That's the only, only way to do it. We don't have drugs mm. right now, good drugs, and we are not likely to get them soon. Right. So... And since you mentioned vaccines going by their unprecedented speed of trials, what do you make of the efficacy of these vaccines, especially those by Sputnik V, Pfizer, or even Biontech? 
Yeah, well, this is perhaps the best news that we heard in the last nine months. Right. That is, it is very feasible that we will have a good vaccine within a few months. They have, they have gotten spectacular results, you know, with 9%, 90% efficacy of the vaccine preventing a disease, the COVID-19 disease. It, you know, it's better than what we get with the influenza vaccine and many other children uh, uh, illnesses vaccine. So it's amazing. And this is a promise, a great promise, that in a year time, we can get rid of this, uh, of this uh, pandemic. And I know that there are many countries around the world, including India, where they make different types of corona vaccines. So the likelihood that they would be able to produce 7 million right. vaccines. Let's have our fingers crossed on what you just shared. Now, with winter and the festive season arriving and Europe reeling under the second wave of coronavirus, does Chinese response hold lessons for the entire world? Yeah, certainly. But the question is that not is that democratic countries, it's very difficult to make such harsh, hmm. you know, orders like they have done in China. You know, they, they close up cities on, on locks, you know. They, if, if anybody is going to the street, they can be arrested. So, you know, India, Israel, Western Europe cannot, cannot impose such mm. harsh treatment on a population. Right. But certainly in time of, a, of such emergency, they prove themselves very well. Right. So if not harsh, perhaps more stringent than what are currently existing. Having said that, thank you so much, Professor Amos Panet, for bringing us all those details. As every time, it's been a pleasure speaking to you even this time.